Good morning and welcome to our worship this morning. Um, as Noel said, Major Mark is on holidays, so we hope that he's really having a blessed and relaxing time. And also seen on Facebook yesterday, uh, happy belated birthday to our general, Brian Peddle. So hopefully he had a good day yesterday as well. Our theme this morning is stepping out of the boat and having faith. So our opening song is song 853. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Thank you. That was a good sign and good to see people clapping their hands. They're just too quiet in our hearts and minds this morning. Just to um, reflect and um, just um, we short video of when Jesus looked or Galilee. And then after we we'll see the video, Jim is going to lead us in our prayer time.
Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14, 15 and 16 remind us of our privilege. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I'm going to share a prayer first of all. Let us pray. Our Father, God and Saviour, since you have been pleased to give us the grace to come through the night to the present day, now grant that we may employ it entirely in your service, so that all our works may be to the glory of your name and the edification of our neighbours. As you have been pleased to make your sun shine upon the earth to give us bodily light, grant the light of your spirit to illuminate our understanding and our hearts. And because it means nothing to begin well if it does not, if one does not persevere, I ask that you will continue to increase your grace in us until you have led us into a full communion with your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is the true Son of our souls, shining day and night, eternally and without end. Amen. Our Lord, we thank you that we can be meeting together in this way again. And we do thank you, Lord, that your light has shone upon our hearts, that your light has shone upon our, your word and helps us, Lord, to know you and to love and serve you. So we pray, Lord, that you, as we meet together in this way, that your word will come to us and that your spirit will move amongst us and that your hand of blessing will be upon us because we meet together in these moments. But our hearts and our minds too go to those who are in distress and who are suffering at this time. Because of the lockdown, because of the, the pandemic that rages throughout our land and throughout our world. And we ask Lord, you will be with those who are facing great difficulty today, whether through bereavement or illness. Lord, we pray that you'll bless those who work to bring and to alleviate pain and suffering amongst our fellow citizens. And we ask that you will just strengthen them and help them. We pray for those, Lord, who too, who work towards a vaccine. And we ask, Lord, that you will just enlighten them and help them in all they do. Lord, we pray too for those who work towards those who are suffering today, maybe through bereavement, and we ask, Lord, you will, your blessing be upon them. But our hearts and minds, too, go to the people of Beirut and the, and the Lebanon. And, Lord, we see the suffering that they have faced in this past week. We pray for those who have lost their homes. Pray for those who have lost their lives. We pray for those who have uh, lost loved ones. And we ask, Lord, you will intervene in, in that situation. We pray for the charities and for the churches that are working there. And we ask, Lord, you will just help and strengthen each one of them. But, Lord, we pray for this moment that we meet together. We pray for Isabel as she leads us. And we ask, Lord, as we open your word, that your spirit comes and indeed your light, as the sun lights our world and our country today, that the light of your word enlightens our lives. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. And we're going to sing again, and our next song is 501. Jesus, precious Saviour, thou hast saved my soul. From sin's foul corruption made me fully whole. Every hour I'll serve thee, whate'er may befall, till in heaven I crown thee, King and Lord of all. All my heart I give thee, day by day, come what may. 
all my heart I give thee, dying men to save. Thank you. I'm reading Matthew 14, verses 22 to 23. Then Jesus made his followers get in the boat. He told them to go ahead of him to the other side of the lake. Jesus stayed there to tell the people they could go home. After he said goodbye to them, he went going up into the hills to pray. It was late and Jesus was there alone. By this time, the boat was already far away on the lake. The boat was having... Between three and six o'clock in the morning, Jesus' followers were still in the boat. Jesus came to them. He was walking on the water. When the followers saw him walking on the water, they were afraid, they said, it's a ghost, and cried out in fear. 
But Jesus quickly spoke to them. He said, have courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Peter said, Lord, if that is really you, then tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come, and Peter left the boat and walked on the water to Jesus. When Peter saw the wind and the waves, he began to afraid and began to sink. He shouted, Lord, save me. Then Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter. Jesus said, your faith is small. Why did you doubt? After Peter and Jesus were in the boat, the wind became calm. Then those who were in the boat worshipped Jesus and said, truly, you are the son of God. I wonder what we are all afraid of. All of us have a fear of something. And this morning I have a fear of technology because last night technology let me down. Or maybe we are frightened of stepping out into the unknown. Being a Christian, we are told to step out in faith. But humanly speaking, this is not always easy because we always have a fear. Sometimes we, like Peter, take our eyes off Jesus and we literally sink and face danger. So why did the other disciples in the boat not offer to step out along with Peter? Why was Peter the only one? Maybe the other disciples were just comfortable where they were in the boat. Maybe they were afraid to step out. There's a book that was printed a couple of years ago entitled, If You Want to Walk on Water, You've Got to Get Out of the Boat. And a couple of weeks ago, after I had finished this message, I was actually looking for this book in a charity shop and I found it. And I brought it up to the counter and said to the girl why I was looking for it, because it was a book that I wanted to read. And she said, we just put that book out yesterday, so it was meant to be. This book helps us to face challenges and what God is telling us what to do. When we were children, maybe the challenge was starting a new school. Or maybe when we left school, starting a new job. Or buying a house. 
even getting married is a risk. But sometimes we are afraid of making the wrong decision. We cannot see into the future, so we don't know what life would be like. Life indeed is full of risks. We take a risk every day, and even when we travel, maybe on an aeroplane, we have faith in the pilot that he knows how to fly the plane and takes us to the correct destination. We have faith because we don't go up to the pilot and ask, are you sure you know what you're doing? Are you qualified? Or can I see your pilot's license? So what about us and our faith in people? Do we have faith in them or do we not completely trust them? A young boy wanted to be an electrician and told his teacher one day that he was going to be an electrician. Instead of the teacher encouraging him and said, that's very good, the reply from the teacher was, I wouldn't trust you with my electrics. So how did this wee boy feel? His whole ambition could have been shattered by this response. But thankfully, when that wee boy left school, he did fulfill his ambition. He did all his hard work, studied and passed all his exams, and his work took him to many places, and he did very well for himself and his family. So in the same way, we are to be like that little boy. Even when someone says to us, we could have done better, or we can't do it, maybe our confidence has been knocked. But when God calls us, he gives us all the tools, and indeed all the stamina that we need. All we have to do is step out in faith. If our relationship with God is to grow, we need to take that first step of faith. All too often, it is so easy just to sit in the boat as it were and watch others stepping out. I'm sure the other disciples sat in the boat and watched Peter. I often wonder what they were thinking when they seen Peter stepping out of the boat. But each of us need to be engaged and focused in what we are doing. So we can't really blame the other disciples for staying in the boat. Because if we were being honest, we would probably have done the same thing. Peter stepped out, he did lose sight of Jesus, and he began to sink. But Jesus saved him, and he will certainly do the same for us. This is because God has great plans for us, even better than we imagined our own plans to be. But sometimes we try and resist God and his calling, and we be like Jonah, and go in the opposite direction. But God knows where we are and will always be at our tail. God promises that he will never abandon us. He offers us words of comfort and encouragement. God gave Peter the power to walk on water. Humanly speaking, Peter could not have done this on his own. In the same way, we cannot go down to Belfast Lock and expect to walk on water. That definitely would be mission impossible. So all Peter had to do was take that one step of faith. But only Peter experienced what it was like to walk on water. Peter took this opportunity, but the other disciples missed it. So if we want to experience God's power in our lives, we cannot sit back. We need to be out there. What if Peter never took this once in a lifetime opportunity? Sometimes it is easy to stay in the boat because that is where we feel safe and comfortable. We might even be happy just to cruise along, but at some stage we need to get off the boat. God calls the ordinary person 
we don't have to fill in an application form or forward a CV, for he has appointed us and commissioned us to go wherever he sends us. This is indeed a bit scary, but think how exciting this would be to meet new people and experience new opportunities. It won't be easy because sometimes we will be battered and bruised in our calling. Our faith may even sometimes be tested. We may even face heckling from others, but in these testing times, we become bigger and stronger and we grow in our faith. So what are we afraid of? Maybe it's a lack of security. The disciples were far from shore and far away from safety. Maybe a loss of stability. The winds were strong and the waves would have tossed them about. Maybe it is a loss of vision. So how do we see ourselves as a Christian, say in five years time? Maybe we're afraid of getting it all wrong or the fear of facing criticism. But if we stay in the boat, we will eventually die. And in that case, what will we have achieved if we just stayed in our safe place? We need to be focused on God, no matter what chaos is going on around us. We need to move if our plans and God's plans are to succeed. Have you ever sat down in a chair for a long period of time? What happens when you get up to move? You become sore and tired, and sometimes our bones even begin to creak. But when everything calmed down, the disciples did make it ashore. Not one person was lost. So what does this teach us? Not to stay in the boat when God is calling us to do something. What about if Peter had said, well, actually, Lord, I've changed my mind. This would have been an opportunity he would have missed. So what is our response to God? Do we say, I can't do that? Or maybe we don't want to rock the boat. Peter, when he stepped out of the boat, he didn't first check with the other disciples or say, well, I'm not going if you're not. Just think how many times Peter would have fished on this water. I'm sure he never imagined one day he would actually be walking on this stretch of water. But it would certainly have been an experience that Peter never forgot. So God is looking for people today who are prepared to step out of the boat. And when we do this, it will indeed be mission possible. And just to help us to reflect on those words, I want to turn to song 610. My life must be Christ's broken bread. But I chose this for the second verse. My all is in the master's hands for him to bless and break. Beyond the brook his winepress stands, and thence my way I take. Resolve the whole of love's commands to give for his dear sake. So what is God telling us today? What boat are we in? Or what is God asking us to step out? So just, we thought, just to reflect when we're singing this song.
you, Lord, it, we do indeed pray that we give our all, that we place our all into your hands, for you will bless it and you will break it. Help us, Lord, not to stay in our boat, but to have the faith to take that step of faith and that you are there beside us. And even, Lord, sometimes when we take our eyes off you, we just thank you, Lord, that you reach out in love, that you save us, and that you uphold us. For we ask these things in your name. Amen. Our closing song is song 509. O boundless salvation, devotion of love, O fullness of mercy, Christ brought from above. And we'll have to sing this straight through the whole seven verses. Thank you.
shall we all share the grace together? May the grace, the grace, grace of the Lord, 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 Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.